Hey, welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel Tuesday Night Live. I'm Jay, I'm the car hauling dispatcher. And it's 8 o'clock, which means it's time to go live. Hey, hey. Okay, so uh, what is this show? This show is basically me talking about car hauling, dispatching, and uh, I've got a live chat window where you can join me. And I take questions about Central Dispatch. You can see on the monitors behind me, I've got Central Dispatch like on every computer that I own so that I can keep watching routes for car haulers. I just work for a couple guys so I can keep the auto transport Intel channel going. And um, like I said, as you come in, hey, what's up, Echo Screen? Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, it's 8 o'clock. It's Tuesday Night Live, YouTube stream. And uh, Echo Screen, do you, have a, uh, do you have a route that I can help you look for on Central Dispatch? Also, and do me a favor. I'm, like, I'm getting a message here. There's something about, uh, let's see, video output is low. YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth streaming, such as viewers will experience buffering. So if you if you if you experience any kind of signal interruption or audio delay or you know if the audio or video needs help, please let me know. This is a pretty new show. Um, this channel's only been around since like July, so um, I'm gonna keep it going though. There seems to be a lot of interest in you know what are good dispatching techniques, how to get into car hauling. And so the live, the live chat is for uh, new car haulers and veteran car haulers to answer questions for each other. I'll say this, every show I have had uh, new and old car haulers talk and help each other. It's really, it's amazing. So yeah, they said there's a delay in sending messages, okay. Are you able to, well, you're sending messages, so that's pretty cool. Hey, what's up, Fearless Motoring? My my stream is running great. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I, I really need the feedback, so thank you. Paul, uh, check your email if you get a chance. Cool, cool, yeah. I, you know, I was late on responding to emails, and thank you for the comment. Um, I, I, I just didn't, I wasn't able to get to my email. Sometimes days go crazy. You know how that is. So, in fact, I want to say this is that I know um, when it gets colder, you know, it's colder now. It's brutal out there. And, it, you know, taking the time to look for a load or deal with a, a sudden problem, the delays at a Mannheim or maybe, you know, you got to fix a light on the trailer. I know it's hard. And um, I hope to always recognize the difficulty of car hauling in this show. So this is, you know, it's tough. It's tough business. Uh, New Jersey to Florida is a good seasonal run. Yeah, yeah, you've got the snowbirds running right now. Uh, here's a question for you, Echo: Is what are the best months, New Jersey to Florida, uh, in your opinion? Um, I'm looking for months. And, you know, what, like, when does it really kick in and when does it really drop off? That'd be awesome for, you know, for others to have in the live chat. All right, cool. Lyndon, thanks for joining me. Awesome, man. Cool, cool, cool. So what I'm hoping for, and I think what will happen, um, Acme, hey, man, how are you doing? What I'm hoping happens is that, and this has happened each show, this is only show number seven, which is cool because... Um, you know, you'll see some episodics run into the high hundreds. So, I uh, hope to get there and do that. But um, if you stick around, I think some of the veteran car haulers will be coming in um, and answer some questions. So, if you have a CDL question, specific truck question, you know, go ahead and put it in the live chat and we'll try and cover that and see if we can get some of those things answered. Because I'm not a car hauler, um, I'm a dispatcher. So, I've got a lot of experience at the desk. And um, I talk to the guys I work with. I only dispatch for a couple guys. I'm full right now, um, but I do ask them questions. I try and learn as much as I can about the actual truck. So, Clarksville, what's up? Cool, I got another subscriber. And I want to thank you. Every subscriber I get, I really do appreciate. Again, this is a young channel. 
Um, and I need every subscriber I can get, every like I can get, every share, every comment. As you guys know, I reply to every comment, every email, sometimes not right away. Days of Bliss, what's up? <laughs> Awesome. And Rithy Max. So I'll tell you what, right now I can tell we're, we're on our way to having the highest number of live chat viewers at one time. So when we hit that record, I'll let you know. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, and the show goes so fast. I've already been on for five minutes and I feel like it just started. So coming back to New Jersey, usually the end of April, beginning of May. That's pretty cool. That seems like a long season, which is awesome. There's nothing like, hey, Acme, there's nothing like a good, long, profitable season. So um, snowbirds are a big part of the success of many car haulers. Um, just like in the freight world, I mean, without Walmart, I mean, think of how many trucks wouldn't run. Which is why it's so interesting when we have like a, a national emergency. Um I don't have to point out the, you know, hurricane hit cities that when we have a national emergency, we really realize the impact of um, freight, transportation, and carriers on our uh, economy, logistics, livelihood. It's amazing, really, which is another reason why it'd be great if ELD, uh, I don't even know what to call I don't even know what to call the FMCSA uh, folks that love ELD. I mean, are they not listening to truckers? I mean, I, don't, I just don't get it. I don't even know what to say. Hey, Hillary, thanks for coming back. Um, I want to know why brokers take so long to pay for a load. All right, I can answer that question. Um, I've actually asked brokers. This is some of the stuff that I do do as I talk to yeah, I said that. Uh, I talk to brokers, ask them the tough questions, argue with them, negotiate. Some brokers don't get paid right away, so they can't pay you right away. For example, um, some brokers that work with dealerships, like most of their business is dealerships. Dealerships don't pay brokers right away, sometimes 30, 60, 90 days. Because sometimes the dealerships don't get paid right away, like... I don't know. I don't know what dealerships, I don't know their time frame of getting paid, but as it's been explained to me, a broker can't pay fast because the dealership's not paying fast. In fact, sometimes I think a broker is paying a car hauler before they even got paid. They're just trying to keep business rolling because they understand anything outside of 30 days is too long for a car hauler. So I, I think that's part of the answer. I try to be fair to everybody. Um, we've got the relationship. You've seen some of my videos where I talk about broker, customer, car hauler, and then you throw in a dispatcher and then, you know, somebody's brother-in-law. I mean, it's a very, uh, you know, there's a piece of a pie everywhere. It's tough. So, and there's not, unfortunately, it feels like sometimes there's just not much pie to go around, which is crazy. And it's not fair and it's hard. Uh, let me see if my live chat here is still keeping going. Yeah. So, um, anyways, let's see what we got here is some of what I was going to talk about. Okay. Let me get off the full screen here. All right. And I am my own switcher. So did that make sense, Hillary? Okay, cool. Awesome. Awesome. And, and it's cool talking to brokers about some of this stuff because when you're first booking a car, you don't have time to, to learn the ins and outs of why something is. And um, I feel like I understand brokers a lot better than I did early on. I still get mad. Um, you know, I do a search. I just did a search. I was doing Virginia to the Northeast. And, um, yeah, I saw some stuff I didn't like. And, you know, and I've written, I've written many blog posts. You might read some of my blog posts out there about... You know, maybe it sounds like I'm bashing people, but I'm really just asking tough questions that I think everybody's asking, and I try to be fair. But, like, I just saw this. I'm just going to scroll down to it. Um, oh, and yeah, this is pretty cool. This is the kind of load people are looking for, right? Virginia to New York. What is the route, anyway? Ah, Sable Forks, New York. You know, you can click the View Route button. You know, and there's a lot of things about... David, hey, Jay, made it to your show. Cool, man. 
Cool. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. I really do. And I always ask, uh, if there's anything you liked, please like the video. Those likes really help me rise in the searches on YouTube and in Google. And that helps the show. So um, I appreciate every like I get. And I've got some dislikes, not many. And, you know, I wish I knew why I got the dislike. But, you know, I'm... I don't say everything correctly, so if I say something incorrectly, or maybe you just flat out disagree with what I said, tell me, because, you know, that helps me. It's good feedback. Let's see here. Okay. That's not bad. So, if I, look at this load. This is pretty cool. Posey Logistics has interesting customers. They'll have, like, you know, show customers, brand promoters. And this Silverado is paying a buck fifty a mile for one truck. Uh, it looks like it's got to be at a show. It's picks up Wednesday. That's tomorrow, and it must deliver the sixteenth. Six hundred forty miles. That's doable. That's a good load. So if you're in Richmond, Virginia area, call them now. I think they have a packet for you to to sign to set up with insurance requirement. You know, they just want to make sure some of your uh, some of your background uh, meets their requirements, but uh, yeah, get signed up with Posey Logistics. That's a good one. So, and, and while I while I say that too, is that if you are a trailer manufacturer, if you have a load board, if you're a broker, if you in any way are part of the car hauling echo system, please send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. I'd be happy to talk to a representative of your company uh, we can do make a video. You've seen some of my videos. I've got ELD. I've got interviews and I'd, I'd be happy to talk to any folks that are looking to reach more car haulers. Oh, wow. I just got many new chan uh, new on the channel. Awesome. Roland, thank you for joining us. That's really cool, man. Awesome. And Jason, just starting car hauling one month, still trying to find my niche. But that's good thinking. Strategic thinking early on is crucial to long-term success in car hauling. And that goes for any industry, but car hauling will eat you up quick. Is there a niche? I don't know, Dave. Is there a niche? Um, follow my company, Instagram. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, man. Share your social media. Absolutely. That was a joke, Dave. That was what I was told. All right, cool. Newbie as well. That's right. And, oh, and there's, oh, and you know what's cool? YouTube is amazing, has so many great new videos. They're always putting out videos to learn. I, I do a lot of research about uh, improving the YouTube channel. So, really, the channel is the focus of Auto Transport Intel. All right, we got 17 watching. So if I get another live chat viewer, then we'll be setting a new record, which is really cool. I'm really excited about this show, um, which is probably pretty obvious, but you know, I don't know. There's not a lot of YouTubers in car hauling at the moment. There are some, um, and uh, I tune in and, and you know, I, I can't wait to uh, join the community as I rise in the ranks. And thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. All right, so let's talk about ELD Mandate. This was six hours ago. I like to go to Google and type in search key phrases. And um, livestock haulers claim ELD mandate will disrupt cattle shipping. So thank goodness that a specific niche industry is telling the FMCSA, you're actually going to negatively affect our business. Um, Livestock can't just sit in the trailer while you're racing to find a parking spot because your ELD skull, where is it? There it is, has told you that you need to pull over and it's time for a break and you don't know what you're doing. You're sleepy. You need to pull over. And well, you know what? It's going to be bad for the cattle. And um, it's about time. I mean, it's a little late. It's, it's November 14th. So we've got, according to, let's go to eldratings.com, we got 33 days until total madness, right? War of the Worlds, like people freaking out, and aliens landing, and ELD skulls telling us how to run our lives. So 
Uh, now, the good news is, if you don't know, is that what I've heard, December 18th is when you have to show that you're trying to comply. You don't have to be an expert, I don't think. Don't hold me to that. But I think as long as you have an ELD hooked up to your diagnostic port in your truck and you have the app on a device and you are trying to follow the rules, that that should be enough. But if you're, I mean, if you don't do anything, you're probably, you know, it's the DOT. You know, you, you've, you've talked to the DOT. Somebody tell me what the DOT is going to say. I, I'd love to hear what somebody has to say. Uh, hey, guys, I sure could use some good ratings on Central Dispatch. That's right. You know, on Central Dispatch, the ratings seem to not help drivers that either just change company names or, you know, for whatever reason, have low ratings. So all you need to go do is, if, you're, if you have a Central Dispatch account, search for a company. Just type in Clarksville Trucking. Oh, shoot, man, I'm covering it. Hang on one second. Okay, there we go. So in Central Dispatch, click Search Company, type in Clarksville Trucking, hit Go, and then give a thumbs up. Give a positive rating. Uh, let's see here. Hit Go, and then you're going to scroll through, and you're going to find Clarksville. Look at this, Dave. We're doing this live, man. But that's what this is all about. And then so, you know, Edit Rating and you know give them a positive rating because this is a community well, let's get all that for what if, oh man what if central dispatch sees us do that but you, the point is that you can give a, another company a positive rating for any reason maybe you talk to them maybe you work together maybe you know whatever maybe they just gave you free money um let's put the system to work for us right my name is matt nice to meet you guys awesome echo screen I uh, just got my quotes from Progressive. Okay, that's another area where I know veteran car haulers have information for new car haulers that I don't have, and that is insurance rates, um, ideas of alternative insurance companies. It's, I mean, we, it's expensive. It's too expensive. I'm about to venture into car hauling with a friend of mine. Is there money in team driving? Thanks for joining the show, Montez, and thanks for the question. Um, I hope that I hope that someone a, a car hauler can give you an answer. I, I can't actually give you that answer. I don't know. Um, fearless motoring trying to still learn some more. Have enough funding. I'll get my car hauling business going. All right, fearless. So do this, man. Start with a strategic plan. Any new business, whether it's a lemonade stand or a technology company, create a business plan. Just identify. You know, who, whose company it is, how much money you have to start with, and then within car hauling, where are you going to haul? What are you going to haul? How do you plan to get your loads? And then start down the road of getting your, you need a medical card. You're going to have to, again, keep your budget for fuel, for your truck, for your trailer, for your insurance, start shopping for insurance. And then you're going to have to get your MC authority, your DOT, IRP, IFTA, so go to, do this, go to uh, FMCSA, right? Go to the FMCSA website, and they have a pretty good checklist for new car haulers. And I'm actually, I'm writing a blog about this. Um, it's almost done. I'm just tweaking it, making sure it's ready to go, and then I'm going to release that. And it's basically for new car haulers, kind of a new car hauler checklist. Um, so I'm still waiting for that to resolve. Let's see what we got here. Oh man, no way. Don't you hate it when a web page won't resolve? Does that mean I'm losing my, I hope, I, I hope we're still connected. We should be. My stream is probably eating up my bandwidth. Let's see here. I'm almost sure that they'll change the hours of service, extend to 14 hours. That's not good. Uh, like the ELD is fine with me. Okay. And, and that's, you know what? It's good. If you can accept ELD and just, you know, think of it as another piece of equipment, you're better off because it's going to happen as far as I understand. ELD operating cost. All right. Let's go to ELD ratings and get an idea of, if you go to ELDRatings.com 
and you click on reviews, you can get an idea of a three-year cost of an ELD. Um, so you're looking at probably about 400 bucks a year, give or take. Some are much more expensive. Um, and I think, you know, if you're with a, a larger freight company, you're not worried about the cost of the ELD. You're just worried about doing it right. Las Vegas, my record is good. Oh, what's your company requirements? Cool. Okay, cool. So, yeah, people are still responding to Dave at Clarksville, which is awesome. All right, so I talked about the livestock. I mean, that's really interesting. Obviously, it doesn't apply to car hauling, but ELD mandate is so large, right? It's the whole freaking truck. If you, if you have any, I mean, construction companies, agriculture, freight, car hauling, um, I mean, I don't even know what other, uh, what other areas, but what I'm seeing is, and this is why I'm talking about it, is that there seems to be a trend finally, no, not that, is that um, companies are starting to realize that they're talking to their congressmen and uh, any policymaker to please try and plead with the FMCSA to come to their senses, slow this thing down, uh, maybe loosen up some of the rules. You've got Texas congressmen, um, and then you've got other lawmakers, other lobbyists. And if you don't know, and then, oh, and this is interesting, Trump pick for FMCSA head will not delay the ELD mandate, which, I mean, that is the word on the streets, is this is not slowing down. Um, but I think larger carriers definitely support ELD because, you know, there's no problem. They just work it fit it into there. Actually, I think that they know it'll it'll make it more difficult for smaller companies to compete with each additional cost and requirement. I know it's going to be harder as a dispatcher, it's going to be harder to comply with ELDs because we're going to book loads assuming we can get something done and then we're going to run out of that one hour. It's going to throw us into the next day. And then you're going to have more broker phone calls and more upset customers and I just don't think that uh, I don't think that ELDs will, you know, if you're if you're cheating on your logs, ah, I'm gonna stop that thought. Uh, blah blah. Uh, also, go to Truckers Report. That's a great forum. If you don't know about the car hauler and auto carrying and trucking forum, you can go to the truckersreport.com, click on forum, and then scroll down to car hauler and auto carrier trucking forum and then you can click on threads it's easy to join it's free let's see you just click that sign up sign up now button and um, just create a username and password become a bobtail member and start joining in the threads and talking um, no spam no individual promotion you know it's for uh, it's for you know learning and sharing and talking and ranting and stuff like that uh, what else we got here? Garmin is a good one for 249. That's good feedback. Um, the jury is still out on what is a good ELD solution for car haulers. So, uh, if Garmin, Dave, if Garmin works good, 249, 249 sounds like a good price to me. Question for you, Dave, where did you buy it? Did you go to Amazon? Did you go straight to Garmin? Here's a question for you. Do you already have a, not Garwin, do you already have a relationship with Garmin through other products? And did that help you on the price of a Garmin ELD? But there it is, $249 on, uh, that's pretty cool. Huh, $249 free shipping. Now, wait a minute. How much is the mobile app? Because it's $249 for the unit. I know a cheaper one than that. Um, so I'm curious, what's the monthly cost of the mobile app, Dave? If you know, please put it in the live chat. Uh, typically varies on whether you have past experience. Keep trucking works great for ELD. Now, I think that keep trucking is the number one known solution. That's a personal belief. I think Big Road is probably number two. Um, and what's cool is if you go to Keep Trucking, they've actually got... I uh, did it again. 
it's tough being my own switcher, but it's no problem. Um, ELD, you go to keeptrucking.com, ELD price comparison. Let's see, where is that at? So keeptrucking.com, and then here we are. Oh, they've got the, they're talking about the deadline coming up. Click on pricing, and then you can, where did I get? ELD price, oh, comp compare prices. There it is. All right, cool. And you can compare Keep Trucking to other solutions too. Now, I think they've listed some of the more expensive solutions. You don't see Garmin up here. You don't see Easy ELD. Um, in fact, when you go to eldratings.com, you'll see there's a few that are actually there's one i think yeah blue tree no not blue tree blue ink bit eld that is cheap so if that works good oh here's a new one viz tracks hours of service also you've got to make sure that it's an fmcsa registered oh here we go by the way this is the fmcsa getting started with registration page this is a good place to start this is a good fmcsa checklist so ch take that down here i'll put that into the live chat so there's your link if you want to start um if you want to start as a new car hauler you can click that link and get some uh, ideas of what what to do amazon talk to garmin first no price break interesting that's good. That's good feedback, man. Okay, cool. So let's go to, uh, does anybody have a search? If you have a vehicle, you want, you want to, you have a route you want to search. Um, I'm interested in that. If you have, I don't want to take specific broker questions. Um, but if you have general questions, cause I don't want to name names unless I have to. Um, also, I wanted to make sure that we know that there are, what's your super trucker name? <laughs> uh, somebody give me a month you were born and then a type of truck you drive and then the last digit of your, either your DOT or MC number, we're going to come up with your super trucker name. So uh, I got this on Facebook. There's so many great things on Facebook. I've seen great pictures of car haulers. December. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Days of Bliss. Okay, so your your super trucker name starts with O. And then we need to know what type of truck you drive. You got a Peterbilt. So O Rockin' Shifter is your super trucker name. O Rockin' Shifter. That's pretty cool pretty cool you should do movies we've got a let's see here oh 12 ram so we got old where's the where's the ram at old burning old burning shifter that's pretty weird you guys have pretty similar super trucker names should be do a movie together could be a buddy picture like uh talladega nights in fact, that was another thing I was thinking about earlier. So this was a, you know, it was a crazy weekend. People have crazy stories all the time. And um, I was thinking about just great road movies. Um, you know, you can go back in time. Easy Rider, uh, Smokey and the Bandit, uh, or like comedies like Vacation or Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Or like high action, like Bullet, um, uh, or weird movies like Sideways. So many great road movies that sometimes really help give perspective on some of the craziness that goes on out there. I know I've been to truck stops and I've seen guys just grabbing up DVDs. I'm sure that that'll end. You know, it's a lot of Netflix and uh, network related stuff, but. Um, what broke back trucker <laughs> broke back trucker really what broke back trucker no you made that up dave you crazy man yeah exactly 
All right, so let's go to the next topic. All right, what do I have next? Um, I was actually, this is important. If you're not, um, if you're not signed up with Ready Auto Transport, Ready Logistics, uh, One Dispatch, then you should be. Um, there are three load boards that you need to know about and be signed up with, okay? Everything, nothing else really matters. I mean, it's good to be signed up with other brokers. You have to be signed up with other brokers. But if you got three load boards, it's Central Dispatch, it's One Dispatch, and it's Cars Rive Network. And unfortunately, what I've noticed is... It seems like Cars Arrive Network is has some pretty high insurance requirements, um, which is unfortunate because I know there are car haulers that are not signing up with Cars Arrive because they're just asking for too much uh, in insurance liability. I think it's fifty thousand a vehicle, and they just you know not every vehicle is fifty thousand, um, but that's I don't know what the standard is, but I think that's what they're doing. But, so if you can't get in with Cars Arrive Network, obviously Central Dispatch is $100 a month. That is, I don't think there's any way around it. I don't, I don't know what you do. It'd be like saying, I'm going to do this business without insurance. You need Central Dispatch. And Ready Auto Transport has uh, one dispatch, ratloads.com. Sign up. It's free. And that's why I'm talking about then they've got new requirements as of September of this year. You have to use their app if you're going to haul for them. Now, they've got a great app, um, mobile app, carrier training, training. They offer, you know, if you have any questions, they're really good at answering your questions. It's a well-made app. So they give you, the, you know, the steps, download the app, log in. Then you're looking at loads. Then they take you through the inspection process. Um, and basically what you do is when you get to your vehicle, you're going to shoot from each corner of the vehicle at pickup, at delivery, touch the screen, mark damages. It helps you get paid faster and make sure their customers are happy. And if you don't use their mobile app, when you pick up and deliver their cars, you could get yellow listed, which means it's harder for you to get loads from them. Um, but if you do what they say, I mean, you get your comm check within 24 hours, usually. So, Ready Logistics is really cool. Let's see what we got here. Maybe pick a Midwest route to do. Sure. Um, I'll do that. Give me some states, if you would. So, what I like to do, let's talk about, what was, what was the one you talked about when the show started? Um... What are we talking about, Dave? ELD, you have to name. Cars arrive. Your insurance is about two twenty a year. Yeah, so that's good information. Thank you, Dave, for all the great information in the live chat. Right there, I hope that you can get at least another positive rating for being such a helpful uh, source. I mean, that you deserve a positive rating for all that uh, helpful input. And that's no BS, right? Um... Let's do a search. All right, let's say here I am. I got to do a search. You just said, how about the Midwest? Now, I don't know the pickup state, and that's okay. Um, but that's where I kind of start. So let's assume, let's say you're in Tulsa. I was talking to a guy earlier. He's in Tulsa. Now, you can either start with, I could do this. I could do Tulsa, which is really the smarter move, because if I know I'm in Tulsa, then... You know, I know I'm in Tulsa, and I'm going to do a radius. I could do 100. I could do 50. I really prefer 50. I think 25 is a little small. So, because in car hauling, you know, you might see something really good just at, you know, 26 miles away. All right, so you pick your radius. Now, where are we going to go? All right, well, in route scouting, where we don't know where we want to go, I like to start with regions. Let's pick a couple regions, but I don't like to pick, I don't like to choose the same state I'm picking in as a delivery. Otherwise, half of the search results are like 10 mile runs that might have a high sense per mile, but aren't going to make me any real money. That's a tow truck. 
I'm not a tow truck. So I'm not going to pick the South because it contains Oklahoma and I'm already picking up in Oklahoma. So be curious what y'all think of that. Can you show loads Florida to Arkansas, Tennessee, Indiana and back? Thanks. Yes, David, I will do that. Illinois and Indiana. All right, cool. So let's do, am I picking up in the right state, Echo? Uh, so what I'll do is while I'm waiting for your reply, let's go ahead and let's hit the refresh button. Let's do a Florida. No one ever thought there'd be a show about a guy searching for loads. I know that because I've talked to people that thought that was a crazy idea. Tennessee, Indiana. It is a crazy idea. And it's working. Which is pretty cool. It's not that exciting, but um, what is exciting is when I'm looking for loads and I do the show live and then I book a load while I'm doing the show, that is actually pretty exciting. All right, so I chose Florida to some states, Tennessee, Indiana. Let's go ahead and throw Kentucky in there. I threw in the south. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully it doesn't distract us. Georgia, Kentucky, Indiana. And if we would go to Ohio, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll take out the South. As I add states, I'll take out some states. Otherwise, I'm seeing so much. My goal is to see, let's do Louisiana, Mississippi. And let's do Alabama. My goal is to see 100 loads. And I'm certainly not going to do Florida to Florida because then I see a million things that I, I, I would never book. Um, unless I really need Florida to Florida. I could do the Carolinas. But we don't want to get too far off track. All right, let's just do let's do five days. Let's make sure we do open trailer. I'll do one through. I don't know your trailer size, so I'll do one through all. Running, non-running, sure. Let's do both. Um, and then I definitely want to see highlighted on top. You always want to see highlighted on top. You want to see the fresh loads. Now it's you know. It's, it's the evening, so we're not going to see many fresh loads. It'd be cool if I did this show live during the day, um, but I'm, I'm too busy, too. I think we're all too busy for that, so that's why I chose the evening. So hopefully that works. Can I make money with a one-car enclosed hauler in Atlanta? By the way, Mike, thanks for asking the question, and thanks for joining the show. Um, I Can I make money with a one-car enclosed? That's a good question. I, I'd like to see a, a car hauler answer that question. I honestly don't know. I don't look for enclosed very often because I find it challenging. But a one car enclosed? Atlanta? Maybe. Um, maybe you could rubber band between Florida and New York. Something like that. I bet you could. And then sometimes you just take regular cars. Might work. All right, Florida to Alabama... I know you said Indiana. Let's see what we got here. We got 140. That's not too bad. And where in Florida are we picking up at? So Miami, Orlando. Let's just look for good paying stuff. Ford Econoline. Oh, there we go. Three together, but Pensacola. You know, you're not in Pensacola very often. Usually it's more like an Orlando or a Miami. Um, Northport. There's a Miami, Ready Auto, Thomasville's not the greatest delivery. Atlanta's really competitive, so you won't see the greatest rates going to or from there. But if you're fast on the draw, like let's say you pay for notifications on Central Dispatch in and out of Atlanta, well, coming out of Atlanta, if you're fast on the draw, you can get those good paying cars out of Atlanta. Um, that's the good part about Atlanta. There's a load of eight. I still haven't seen anything impressive. Um, so really, like, it looks like you got to drive beyond Georgia to find the meat. Here's Orlando to Atlanta. I mean, you don't want that one. It's not even... And we've seen a lot of in-ops, too. So that's good to take note of the in-ops. Um, my buddies say Miami up north aren't the best loads. Yeah. Miami's tough. I think Miami's really tough. I prefer, if I go to Florida to, unless I'm 
you know, taking a driver home to get to Orlando and turn around or the west side of Florida um, and then head up. Let's see here. In fact, what I've done with Miami drivers sometimes is send them to the west side of Florida to get going north. We haven't seen much going north, though. Tampa to Louisville, 34 cents, probably because there's not much else. Um, Tampa to Indiana, 21 cents, so this is not good. Uh, I mean, that's the best pan one we've seen. Orlando to Indy, um, and, I mean, we don't know the status because it's inoperable. It could be really damaged up. Kokomo, Indiana, 38 cents. Miami to Indiana, 39 cents. I mean, and you're looking at two Porsche for 39 cents a mile. Okay, so I think what we're seeing is we're getting an idea that Florida to Indiana, um, and if I think about it, I've seen that before, Florida to Indiana is tough. If you hawk the route, you know, you just stare at it and find something good paying to like Nashville or maybe an odd city in Mississippi, so even here, Tampa to Youngstown, a truck paying 43 cents a mile, that's not good. Um, and you can ask for more money, but they're probably just going to say no and wait for somebody else. Here, Montway's got, oh, there we go, 25 cents a mile. Sure. That's not good, man. That's not good. So what you might need to do is do a shorter run. Um and try and make money if you get out of florida make a short run out of florida that's what i would start to i would open another screen don't close this so just keep refreshing this and then open another screen okay so let's say let's say i'm working for you and i mean i, I didn't like what i saw but we know we've got to get out of florida move out of florida for car hauling uh, okay. How about Texas to Ohio? That's another tough one. That's one I, I have done. Um, that is tough. Depending on which city especially. Because when you come out of Texas, money is good going into Texas. Money coming out of Texas is not usually good. But you'll find those loads that are posted like there's a guy. God, what's that guy's name? He moves trucks. Like big trucks, man, he pays great. Steigers, Larry Steigers. Man, you'll find some insane paying trucks out of Larry Steigers. Especially if you're, what you can do in Texas is if you'll get out to um, the middle of the state or like a uh, Austin or, you know, the, Houston seems to pay the least. Dallas is really competitive. But if you can get outside and... Um, and you've got room for bigger trucks, which is another reason why I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of. If you have like a nine car hauler, it makes my job really tough because you don't have room. Maybe you don't have room for some of those bigger trucks. Keep Trucking has a petition to change the hour of service from 14 to 16 hours. Please sign it, dude. Uh, hey Dave, do you have the link to that? I'll see if I can find it, and we'll all sign it. Keep Trucking. HOS petition. Um, that is a great change the HOS rules. Sign the petition. Okay, guys, here it is. I live in Austin. Um, you know what? I love Austin. Um, not only is Austin a really cool city, but I like that's a sweet spot in Texas, as far as I'm concerned. San Antonio, Austin is the sweet spot because like el paso it's like it's so far from dallas and that i mean you can make a route out of el paso to dallas but i think that there are there are certain uh companies that kind of have that route wrapped up um yes we can't post links only you can oh okay i didn't know that well i just posted it so here's the petition Sign the petition, okay? The solution, driver should be allowed. This is awesome, dude. You know what's cool is this kind of stuff. I mean, not only does keep trucking seem to have 
the number one ELD solution and be the most popular, but then they're actually being an activist and an advocate for car haulers and creating a petition for you to sign. That's awesome. That is awesome. I hope I get to talk to somebody from Keep Trucking. Um, if you know somebody at Keep Trucking or you are from Keep Trucking, please send me an email. I would love to talk to somebody at your company. Let's see, New Jersey to Indiana. Yeah, let's check that one. Signed mine. Good job, man. I see chat is on slow mode. Is it? Slow mode is on. Oh, yeah, you know, I got to learn more about that. I'll look into that. Let me send myself an email. Uh, let's see here. Uh, auto transport. Okay, learn about chat slow mode oh man by the way dave it is 8 46 and we're coming up on me playing heavy truck car simulator oh by the way if you're if you're just joining the show i got my eld skull up here that's right eld skull uh doesn't care what you're doing uh and is not here to help you ELD Skull is your all-in-one solution to make your life a living nightmare. So, try it. ELD Skull. It's not cheap, and it doesn't work. Alright, so what else we got here? Alright, I looked at the car hauling forum. We went to ELD Ratings. Oh, do you know about OverdriveOnline.com? They have great articles. Um, I, always, I, I always keep finding interesting stuff. Some stuff you may agree with or disagree with, but it's at least informative. Um, they put out some really great articles on OverdriveOnline.com. And I, I hope that uh, one of these days, one of my blog posts ends up on OverdriveOnline.com. That'd be cool. I also Googled some other uh, news other than ELD mandate. And, you know, you find if you type in car hauling, you know, there's a lot of crime stuff. And if you type in auto transport, you get a lot of puff pieces of, you know, this company or that company um, has done something wonderful. And community building is really important. But sometimes when it comes to a puff piece, you can't tell if it's promotional or actual news. So I try not to cover that stuff. Um, all right. That's right. New Jersey to Indy. Was it New Jersey to Indiana? Oh, cool. What sucks? Oh, sucks. Okay. Wow, really tough. I should deadhead north, eat up the fuel, start from a different state and farther north. Sometimes that's what it takes. As a dispatcher, I hate to have you deadhead. Um, that almost never happens, but we've done it. I've learned from some car haulers just to sit and wait and just stare. And also, if you are sitting and waiting, if a good load pops up, Grab it and build a load around it. Get that anchor load. Don't search for the perfect load, right? Because the perfect load is, you know, it's that carrot you know, out in front of your windshield that you are never going to get to. But there are great loads out there. And if an anchor load is falling apart, scrap the route and start over. You know, if your anchor load's falling apart, don't. Don't stick with the the in-op fill-ins that you you know that are gonna just be a total pain and, and you're not even gonna break even, you know right? Don't do that. Look, multitasking. Oh yeah, uh, no call, <laughs> no cost on Garmin ELD app. All right, so oh really? I didn't know that. That is pretty cool. Garmin is sounding better and better. So I would love to know more about it. Maybe I need to interview Garmin. Um, New Jersey to Indiana. Now, I rarely do one state to one state um, because, you know, that's like looking through a small telescope, right? I want, I want, it, I want the, I want the broad flashlight. I want the shotgun approach. So, it, let's say I know I am going to Kentucky. I'm still going to look at states around it. Um, I'm going to choose for in this case. I'm going to choose Tennessee. I'm going to throw in West Virginia, but I'm going to keep the pickup state as just New Jersey. Let's start with that 
because I don't want to be picking up all over down the road. I'm losing money, I'm losing time, and my ELD skull is yelling at me the whole way. So, uh, New Jersey to that, and five days is reasonable. Don't make it too short. Don't make it too long. Right? Um, moderation is the key. And then I highlight my listings and I search. Okay, New Jersey to Indianapolis. Now, we got to make sure that one of the tough parts of being a dispatcher, if you're not used to that area, is making sure it's in the right position according to bridges, right, and whatnot. So, like, when I, if, if you were my client um, and I was your dispatcher, I'd check with you about some of these pickup locations to make sure that works. Uh, I know I'm kind of zooming in and zooming out, but it helps me understand. I'm also looking at the highway. We're on I-80, and I would make sure that you're cool with taking I-80 I through, I'm assuming that's Pennsylvania Turnpike up there, through Ohio. I'm guessing you're not going to do 76 through um, PA. But you might. So we would want to talk about that. We would want to make sure we get the highway right and that we're not booking loads spanning two highways. Uh, but I like 74 cents a mile for a car. That's cool. Uh, BMW 3 Series. That's great, man. That'd be a, that sounds like a good anchor load. Get two cars together. Ah, oh, let's see here. That's interesting. And you always wonder, 73 $1.70. Two pieces of gum, three sticks of dynamite. I mean, I, you wonder how you get so specific, but that's cool. What I don't like about decimals is that means there's no room for negotiation. And I don't like loads when there's no room for negotiation. Because to me, in auto transport, there's always room for negotiation. I mean, we haven't even talked about tolls, wear and tear, uh, grades, uh... We haven't talked about anything. So when I see a decimal, I feel like skipping it. I'm just going to tell you right now. So if you're a broker and you're using decimals, this dispatcher is probably going to skip your load and look for something else. If I'm trying to fill a spot and that's the right load, now I'm coming back to you. But you're not my anchor load if you're a decimal. Hey, Ahmad, thanks for joining me again. I appreciate it. I know I'm, I'm kind of looking off screen. i got my other screen here with my live chat. Uh, I hope in the future to perfect my studio performance. Paul sounds like an expensive startup. Yeah, and thank you guys for live chatting to each other. Um, please like this show. Um, please like my videos. Uh, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate everybody in, that's in here. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you live chatting with each other. And... Um, this is really turning into a cool forum. By the way, we're at record live uh, viewers for like a half hour now. So that's cool. It's a, it's a new channel. It's it's a young show, and I hope, I hope it just keeps growing. Um, five car may be too much depending on the cars you carry. Four car is perfect. I like a four car. Man, I love a three car. Um, those two in Old Bridge, New Jersey are four dealer I know. Okay, so that's isn't that cool? When you right away, by the city, by the broker, you already know, I want to find that load. Because I learn, every time I look for cars, I learn. Uh, old Bridge, okay, cars arrive, that's right. Trucks, cars arrive. That's going to fill you up. If you had, I mean, you're looking at the nose, the tail, Anyways, you know that. I'm getting a 2006 F350 with a 40-foot dovetail. Any advice? Yeah, if you've got advice for Montez, please uh, please give him some. Uh, so she get a single axle semi. Also, and this that's where the live chat really does get good uh, in the second half of the show. Um, you can ask this stuff on Facebook groups. There are so many great Facebook groups out there. I'm not ready to advertise names yet because I'm a new member and I don't want to, I don't want to blow it. But um, yeah, it seems like there's like maybe there might be a dozen car hauling 
Facebook groups. I'm not sure yet. Still learning. Um, and don't forget, you can ask this stuff on, go to the Truckers Report, sign up. You can create a username, just sign up. No big deal. And you can start asking questions, joining the threads. Man, there's so many threads. It's awesome. You can create a new thread, join a thread, um, and they and they just keep on living. So I don't even know. I mean, there might be... Oh, there's... Oh, here we go. There are over a thousand threads. That's crazy. Um, wow, these date back to 2012. I don't know how old uh, the Truckers Report is, but that's awesome. Cool, man. Oh, we got specific truck knowledge happening here. So that's really cool. Pinebrook, New Jersey and Bordentown, New Jersey are big car hubs, which also means you're going to find rates are more competitive oftentimes. But so if you're a bigger car hauler, you're going to probably rely on those popular cities more. I know that like if I have a three car, if I'm working with a three car, I'm going to look for stuff that's not it right in the city. Um, I'm going to have, make sure I have a winch and I'm going to be ready to drive, yeah, 30 minutes outside of the city to pick up that car that is just not moving. And I'm going to ask for more money right away. Now, like, these cars arrive trucks also know that these are listed. We're on Central Dispatch right now. So when its cars arrive or it's ready auto transport, you need to go to their load board and then retype in the search to see if it still exists. Because it's possible for a load to be on Central Dispatch, and yet it doesn't exist anymore because it's already gone from their load board, and there's a delay. Um, because they don't, you know, they don't monitor Central Dispatch. They just dump their loads on Central Dispatch. So Old Bridge, so they're still there. Um, and sometimes actually, there's more money sitting. You know, maybe they increase the money. Um, now this one here, like this, eighty cents to Fort Wayne, by the way, you know that Fort Wayne is, I mean, if you if you go to Fort Wayne, you are dedicated to, let's just look at Fort Wayne here. Here we go, here's that super crew. Fort Wayne, obviously is, 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 a, is quite a different destination from like Indianapolis or, um, you know, uh, the southern side of Indiana. So this is, I'm talking to dispatchers, um, that if you're a dispatcher and you're booking for this car hauler coming out of New Jersey, just be sensitive to which interstate he's probably driving on. Talk to him about it. Uh, let's see. Facebook eats new peeps up. Yeah, well, that's why you can't, you can't stare at Facebook all day. I try not to. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll, it'll, you can suck up a whole day just looking at Facebook. And then you're depressed. Did you, did you read that? They say that uh, Facebook is, uh, increases depression. Something crazy. Hey, what's your super trucker name? Um, if you just joined me, please let me know the month you were born, the type of truck you drive, the last digit of either your DOT or MC number, and we're going to come up with your super trucker name. So that way, then you have like a code name when you're at the pilot and, you know, you're just in that kind of mood. Hey, Jay, sorry I missed your show. We'll have to watch you later. That's cool, Patrick. Thanks for saying hello. Uh, please remember to give a like. I, I do uh, appreciate every like I get. Um, I appreciate every subscriber I get. And um, thanks for saying hello and joining the chat. I appreciate it. And if you have any specific questions, ask them now. We'll go another... The average show has been about an hour and 20 minutes. So we'll go about another 15 minutes or so. I do a lot of dealer deliveries from the ports to the dealers in New Jersey, New York. That's good. So it means you have your TWIC. It's really good to have your TWIC. I think that uh, as a car hauler, you need to have a winch, a jump box, your TWIC, and your CDL. Not in that order. If I was to put it in order, I'd say CDL, winch, jump box, twick, something like that. So my name would be Chrome Burnin 
beast. Something like that. I don't have a DOT number, so it's pretty close. Um, also, we talked about if you are use if you're if you're on Ready Auto Transport, make sure that you are using their app. Um, you don't want to get yellow listed. Ready Auto Transport is a great load board. Has a great app. I, I like the company all around. And they don't charge anything for uh, using their load board. And I think it's tied into the auctions. I think that's what happens is a lot of the vehicles listed on One Dispatch, Ready Auto Transport, Ready Logistics, uh, got there either through dealer purchase at an auction or when they've got different relationships. So I'm, I'm not 100% positive. Definitely will hit the like. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Fort Wayne, too many low bridges. Man, isn't that the truth? That um, if there wasn't enough stuff to think about, then you've got low bridges. Because the last thing you want to do is create a terrible day with a low bridge. No doubt about it. Also, air compressor helps a lot. That's good advice. That's good advice. you got to have your Swiss Army knife. They're putting my lift and toe on today. That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, that is not something that you hear about very often that car haulers have. So I'm excited about that. That is way cool. Uh, we're getting near the end of the show here. It's nine o'clock. I'll play the uh, I'll play the game here in a second. I'm just going to plug the game so that you see what I'm talking about, so that you can kind of stick around at the end of the show, starting in about. There's my phone. In about five minutes, maybe. I'm going to start playing. This game is awesome. Um, this is the way I like to end the show. So, that is Heavy Truck Driving Simulator. Heavy Truck Driving Simulator. All right, so we'll get that cranking up here in five minutes. Um, and is there any other questions here before we start doing that? What state are you based out of? Um, I'm in Kansas City. I'm in the center of the country. Um, you could, uh, you could take a push pin, stick it in the middle of the country, and you'd be at Kansas City. Um, maybe in the middle of Kansas or Nebraska is the exact center, but, uh, yeah. And... You know, that, that's just coincidence, but I think it's, I, I like being in the center because uh, when I travel, um, it makes it central to anywhere, and I see a lot of car haulers on I-70 and I-35, so um, it's interesting how when you look at the sections of the U.S., uh, there are areas that pay better, obviously, and one of these days, I'm going to create my weather map of rates. Um, but basically, I try to I try not to go west of the Midwest unless that's where the driver lives. But it seems like you just kind of get stuck northwest, southwest. You get you just kind of get stuck in this area. If you stay east of the Midwest, um, you can kind of get back and forth better. Like do like a Detroit down to the south. And then maybe come over to the east, come up to the northeast, pop over. I think you just have a lot more options if you kind of move around. You don't want to get stuck down in Miami. Um, and if you're able to brave the cold, this is a great time to do that. There's not a lot of loads in Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. You know, Boston seems to be where kind of it tap, taps out around Boston. Uh, up to Buffalo, there could be good stuff. This really, this is where you'll see higher rates up in the northeast. As it gets colder, then you move down into the south, and the rates drop, especially in December and January, because everybody's down south. And if you find that you get taken out to the southwest, and you try to take a load from California to the east, you're just going to get killed on the rates um, you know, you'll be under 30 cents a mile per vehicle. So you really want to go state by state or two state hops. 
Um, the, the, you know, the, uh, the Rocky Mountains are really tough um, in the winter months, you know, to go from like Denver to Utah. Um, you know, although what's interesting is it's a lot flatter around here than you think. But as you go from like Boise City up into Washington and, you know, Montana, you can really run into a lot of snow problems. Wyoming doesn't really have a lot of loads. North Dakota doesn't have a lot of loads. Um, but if you can find a run, like one time we did Carolinas to South Dakota, it was not only a beautiful run for the driver, but uh, it was good paying. You've got to be careful of your tolls up here from Chicago over to Ohio, I'm told. And uh, huh, I'm told about the tolls. So anyways, you know, it's interesting to look at, you know, you, you learn these things over time. Um, and, you know, if you're having any trailer issues, you don't want to run along like, uh, you know, if you're at the elevations in Flagstaff, Albuquerque, you just have to be careful. You need to make sure your trailer is up to snuff to handle that kind of stuff. Uh, what do we got here? So what are the best winches out there? Um, what would harbor for, what would a harbor freight special? I don't understand would a harbor freight special. Is that a winch? I'm not sure. But if there's a if there's a veteran car hauler that can recommend some winches, I don't really know uh, winch brands, but I'm actually curious about that too because I think there's several. Uh, warms a good little pricey. Warms are good little pricey. Warms. A uh, good place to buy a 7, 8 car trailer. Oh, thanks for the question, Ariel. You know, that's another good question. Um, that's going to take a veteran car hauler. Got to go. Thanks, Dave. Man, thank you for joining the show, as always. And uh, give a like to Clarksville Trucking if you can. Uh, what's a good rate per mile to stick with? I've been trying to stick around 50 cents. You're correct. 50 cents is where you want to stick around. Do not bend over backwards for anything below 40 cents. Don't do it. Um, don't haul cheap freight. Say no to cheap freight. Look for an anchor load for 80 cents if you can. That's a great, that's a great way to um, hedge your bets. Because if you can get an 80 cent a mile anchor load, depending on your trailer size, you're already, you know, you're putting yourself way ahead of the game. Gonna have to bag her for the night. Thank you, Echo. Thank you for joining the live chat. I really appreciate it. Um, good night, Echo. The prices on winches at Harbor Freight are very inexpensive, but I'm not sure how reliable they are. That sounds like pretty good advice. Let's check that out. And we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here in a couple minutes here. Harbor Freight. I'm not familiar with that brand, but it's always helpful to get. Uh, this is why I do. I rely on car haulers. To tell me this stuff. Oh, wow. So they got all kinds of stuff. Harbor Freight tools. That's pretty cool. I'll have to look into that. Great info. Thank you, Montez. All right. Yeah. Clarksville, you have been helpful. Warns winch are used on Jeeps to go off-roading. Huh. Let's check that out. Warns winch. I didn't know that. I didn't know the brand of the winch on the Jeeps. That's cool. I, I, I know I've seen those pictures before. Jeep, truck, SUV. That's cool. Warns. Very cool, man. You know, the live chat here is, is really awesome. That's one of the reasons I make it a long show, because I know it takes time out of your guys' busy schedule to join the show. So uh, feel free to dig through the live chat. See if you can get some great information. If you haven't already given this show a like, please do. Please like any video that helps you. It helps me rise in the rankings. Thank you for subscribing. Please share. Please comment. Uh, send me an email, auto, autotransportintel at gmail.com. And um, so I'm going to wrap this up. Take you back to, oh, by the way, I did want to say this. You can go to autotransportintel.com. You can read my blog posts. Um, and basically, it's mostly the, the past show's with blog information within the videos um, but I do also have blogs that I write if you have if you have a car if you have a car hauling company or brokership or you know whatever your company is and you need some social media or some writing 
Maybe you needed just a 300 word blog post, 500 word, 800 word. I can consult you on that. Um, I do a lot of writing and also then the audio and video. So I am, uh, I'm going to wrap this up and I really appreciate you guys joining me again. See if there's any, any new info. Nope, not at the moment. So let's play heavy truck driving simulator and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, I got this idea from, I saw there was a lot of car hauling game apps. And um, I downloaded this one. It's really fun, actually. Oh, man. Screens went out. Okay. So I had them going so long. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. Even my screen's like, you play too long. All right, buttons. I'm going to do buttons. So you got to download this Heavy Truck Driving Simulator. It's really pretty fun. Okay, job number one, load woods and deliver it to the construction site. Ready? Gas pedal. Oh, man. Man, I got some truck problems. I better check the uh, transmission. There we go. Cool, I got the hook. All right, so I've driven an empty truck. I got my load. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, man. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I really do. All right, my truck is loaded. Oh, man, watch that turn. This is a great way to blow off steam, dude. Video games are the best. There we go. I just delivered my load, so that was good. Now, this second level is really tough. Three stars. Awesome. Next level. Load wooden boxes, deliver it to the construction site. Man, this hill. I hate this hill. Oh, made it. Oh, man. With the first time you play this game, that hill sucks. Dude. Like a pro, man. Great show. Thanks, Info. Thank you, Landon. Thank you, Lyndon. I appreciate you joining. New subscriber. Great show. Thank you, Ariel. Man, I appreciate it. I really do. That's awesome. Tell your friends. Um, you can share. It's easy to share the link. Um, and, um, you know, below a video, you can click share. And it'll it'll give you a, uh, a link that you can send. Oh, uh, man. See, that's what happens when you... When you drive and talk. Okay, let's hit that. Uh, let's hit the reverse. Oh man, I gotta get around the fence. Did it. Nice. So, you know, whether you watch movies, play games. Ooh, Tetris. No, that's not Tetris. I had a Tetris fan on one of my shows. I don't play games near as much as I used to. I guess that's why I get a lot more done. Job three, load cars and deliver it. All right, cool. Here we go. nice oh yeah uh see you next tuesday yes thank you patrick i will see you next tuesday 
I'm going to do this every Tuesday. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, I think it's helpful. It's helpful to me. It's helpful to car haulers. Um, I think it helps brokers. I think it helps the load board companies. I hope it helps Central Dispatch. I really do. I hope that Central Dispatch can come down on rates. I hope it helps ELD. Uh, well, I've got ELD Skull up here, by the way. So ELD Skull. Okay, I can't believe you. What is this? Is this a game? Who is this? We are done. <laughs> this is pretty weird. What game is that? Life? Okay. Um, load containers delivered to the construction site. Um, and yeah, so if you're, especially new car haulers. If, oh, this is not good. Oh, man. Let's see if I can just gun through it. Nope. Alright, so we're going to have to hit reverse here. Oh! <laughs> Who hasn't had to do that move outside the Mannheim? No doubt. No doubt. Sweet. So, yeah. If you've got a question... Oh, that's not good. If you've got a question for me, um, or, you know, anybody on the show, go ahead and, you know... That's awesome, man. Thank you, Eric, for subscribing to my channel. Uh, I will see you next Tuesday night. I really appreciate you joining my show. And remember, if you don't know your super trucker name, the month you were born, the type of truck you drive, the last digit of your USDOT MC number, and now you've got a code name that you can use to pilot. So let's go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit pause on that, close this, and then we're going to close out with my uh, car hauler on the road video. This has been another Tuesday Night Live, Car Hauling Dispatcher. I'm Jay. I'm the Car Hauling Dispatcher. You're watching Auto Transport Intel. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Don't forget to click the notification bell, and I will see you all next Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.